Okay, so what I was doing last um, in the last video was draw file in the top here and just get into this to the point where it's almost perfect, almost as smooth as it can be. Now, if I want to refine this a little bit more, what I'm going to do is use some of this uh, commonly called wet and dry paper or aluminium oxide paper, as it's also called in a more technical term. Okay, there's various different types of this, but this is the stuff we're using today, and it's called wet and dry paper because obviously I can use it dry like this, but I can also apply a little bit of water to my um, work like this. Now what the water does is it helps to keep the paper clean and stops it from clogging up with the waste pewter and it also the pewter and water mixes to form a sort of an abrasive slurry okay which is a mixture of pewter and water that helps to refine that edge further. So I'm just going to put a little bit more water on there. I'm going to get my um, got wet and dry paper like this, wrap it around my file like this and then again working that same draw file in motion just backwards and forwards like this. Now you can see that grey paste or slurry appearing just on the top of the work. Okay, We don't need loads of water but you can see it just there. That is the slurry and that's going to help us to refine our work. And at this point you can get quite dirty so you might wish to pair, put a pair of um, vinyl or latex gloves on or something like this to stop your hands getting uh, dirty but obviously just make sure at the end that you wash your hands regardless. Okay, So I'm going to go across like this and what I'm looking for is a consistent pattern on the top so I know I've done as much as I can with this paper. Now. The wet and dry papers come in various different grades. Now they'll have a number on the back. I can't quite see it there on that one. Okay, but they have a number like this on the back. Now basically, the higher the number in the paper, the smoother it is. So this one was a P600, which I find for pewter works quite nice after I've uh, draw filed. Okay, and it goes all the way up. Probably this is one of the smoothest papers we can get. This is a P1200. So what I'm going to do, because I've done it with P600 uh, once, I'm going to put a bit more water on like this start with my P1200 paper now and then go over again to really refine this surface as good as I can. Okay, so I'm just going to go over and again I'm looking for that consistent pattern and at this point now you can see there's very very few scratches at all on that and that is ready for buffing or polishing. Okay, Now what I'd want to do with my pewter part, as you can see I've done that on one surface there, I'd want to go around and do the other thing. Now one thing I am doing here which I'd encourage you not to do at all is by rubbing my finger across to test it. Now although this surface is incredibly smooth what you can see on the edge here is a very wafer thin layer of pewter. There it is, okay, that little wafer thin layer of pewter, and that might be razor sharp, okay. So you want to be very, very careful if you're going to run your fingers across a pewter surface, and you want to make sure that you've deburred this edge, okay. So you might, for example, use some wet and dry paper and just make sure you're just deburring that edge as well before you go to the uh, the extent of running your fingers around the sides, okay? So I'm just going to deburr that edge, and you can see that's quite nicely polished, okay? So I would do that to all the surfaces around the side like this, and obviously I'll need to do it to the front and back as well. Now, the front and back is a little bit trickier because I can't really hold it in the vise very well, okay? So what I'd recommend you do is to get a block of scrap wood, perhaps MDF or hardboard or something like this, okay, and attach some wet and dry paper to it, okay, and this is making like a sanding block for yourself, okay. Now, this is quite a good casting, but I'm going to start off with quite a rough grade wet and dry paper, so this is P120, and I'll imagine, for example, I've, I've attached this to the board there, or even using the paper sheet on a flat surface can work, but you'll tend to find you'll use less material if you if you keep these as tools in your, in your tool kit, effectively. So what I'm going to do, once again, just put a little bit of water on my uh, wet and dry paper to keep it lubricated and create that slurry, and I'm going to hold my pewter piece and just work backwards and forwards. Now once again you might find this is quite rough so again I'd probably recommend using in this case a pair of work gloves or holding the outside of the pewter with some paper or something to prevent your hands from getting scratched or blistered. So I'm going to work in one direction like this just going across you can see that slurry is developing it's helping to abrade the surface and make it smooth and I'm going to keep checking this every now and again you can see this consistent pattern is appearing here, but I've got to go a little bit further. I've got some oxidation left there. So you can turn this every now and again. I don't want to put too much pressure on, because what I don't want to find is that I end up with an angled surface. So I can turn it every now and again. I could even go to the process of counting how many strokes I'm going in each direction as I turn it to make sure that I don't do it too many times in one side and end up with an angled surface. So if I take this off now, Got a tiny little bit more oxidation. I'll keep going for a little bit until we get to a finished outcome. There we go. 
Sorry, that's the school bell in the background you can hear there. Okay, so this is getting quite consistent. I've got a couple of little marks there. So I'd basically keep going with this, okay? But I'm just going to talk about the next stage. So at this point, okay, you can see I've got a consistent pattern, apart from these marks, consistent pattern there. So that's when I know I can move on to the next grade. So I've got my 120 there. I'm going to flip this over. I've got some P600 ready on the sanding block there. Again, I'm going to apply a little bit more water onto the surface to create that slurry and do the same thing again. So this one, we can afford to be a little bit less um, careful because this material is quite uh, smooth abrasive so I'm not going to take too much material off so I can be pushing down fairly hard I suppose and not worrying too much but I still want to keep quality control on this as I go and you can see that surface is coming up really nice okay. now. If I had more time just now in this video, I would obviously spend a bit more time on this to make sure that those little imperfections uh, were taken out. Now they could be there because either I've got a small air bubble when I was casting, or perhaps that might be because I didn't remove some of the slag at the casting stage. So it's always good to make sure that the material is pure before you pour it into the mould, but it could be as simple as a small air bubble. In this particular case, they're not too bad, and again, I would, if I spent a bit more time, I could use the, uh, the wet and dry paper to take those out. Okay.